A wise person said that the only reason to suffer in life is to understand that you don't have to suffer anymore. A human being isn't made to suffer. 99% of suffering is mental, psychological suffering. And unlike other creatures, a human being is able to control its mental state. It's pretty amazing how having a positive and focused mindset can make a big difference in shaping your future. Imagine your future goals as a blank canvas where you can practice being the person you want to become. If you genuinely feel grateful or confident even before achieving your goals, it can bring about a powerful transformation. It's like setting the wheels in motion for success by experiencing those positive emotions in advance. Some people wait for things to change externally before feeling happy inside. This habit can keep them feeling unfulfilled and separated from what they want. The key is to feel the positive emotions first, not as a reaction to something happening, but as the cause that kickstarts positive events. When your heart and brain are in sync, it's like having a personal Wi-Fi signal that broadcasts your positive thoughts and emotions. Our emotions are influenced by our experiences and science tells us that our environment affects our genes. So when you intentionally generate positive emotions in your heart that align with your future goals, you're basically sending signals to your genes ahead of time. This affects your behavior and helps you become the person you want to be. Keeping this positive and focused state of mind is crucial. In fact, our research, along with collaborations with the HeartMath Institute, shows that even beginners in meditation can experience significant changes at a molecular level after just a week of training. This suggests that their bodies are transforming into a different state, driven by the power of their positive and synchronized heart and brain. So, what is heart coherence, you might be wondering? Well, it's basically about getting your heart rate and breath to work together smoothly. When we're scared or stressed, our heart races and we breathe quickly, putting our brain on high alert. Many of us spend a lot of time worrying about the worst things that could happen, which leads to constant stress and holding our breath. What we've discovered is that slowing down your breathing can actually slow down your brain waves. This helps shift your body from survival mode to a calm and ready state for creativity. Think of it like having a big drum, but being too tense to hit it properly. Learning to go from fight or flight mode to relaxation allows your heart to open up. When you focus on your heart, it sends out a powerful and calm energy that tells your brain it's okay to think about new possibilities. With each steady beat of your calm heart, it creates a soothing sound that carries information, like the ripples on the surface of water. The more steady this rhythm, the better it can share information. Now let's talk about the second rule, being aware of your unconscious self. In my own spiritual routine, I start each day by asking myself, what's the best version of me that I can be today? This lines up with scientific research that says it's important to be conscious of our thoughts, habits, and feelings that happen automatically. It's a journey of discovering ourselves and growing consciously, which has the power to change every part of our lives. In my daily routine, I've realized something profound. Just by observing the parts of ourselves we want to change, we show that we're not completely tied to our old selves. We start stepping into a state of pure awareness, watching the leftover bits of who we used to be. So what's my process? It's simple but incredibly powerful. I make a conscious effort to notice who I don't want to be anymore. Research suggests that by the time we're 35, a huge 95% of who we are is made up of habits, attitudes, beliefs, perceptions, and reactions that work automatically in our minds. Our minds often run on autopilot, making us unaware of what's happening around us for most of the day. The challenge 
is to break the cycle of repeating the same choices every day. Making real change involves unlearning old habits and learning new ones, like cutting away dead branches and growing new connections in our brains. During my morning meditation, my first job is to pay close attention to the automatic thoughts and feelings I might have. I might be judging others without even realizing it or carrying around guilt that's deep-rooted in my mind. By shining a light on these hidden thoughts and feelings, I can make them conscious and take control of them during the day. The more I become aware of these hidden thoughts, the more control I have over them. Many people start the day wanting to be positive, but old habits of negative thinking, acting or feeling can be deeply ingrained. So I take a moment to acknowledge the things I no longer want to be and focus on imagining the person I want to become. By thinking about and practicing these new behaviors, I'm creating new pathways in my brain. This helps my brain get used to these behaviors as if they've already happened. Plus, if I can feel the emotions linked to this new ideal self, I'm giving my body a taste of the future on an emotional level. Research shows that this mental practice not only changes the brain, but also affects the body. Our state of being, which is a combination of thought and emotion, is what the quantum field responds to. So my goal is to come out of meditation with a different mindset and body. But it doesn't end there. I have to keep this new state going throughout the day, even when faced with challenges or emotions from my surroundings. When I can keep up this change for a good amount of time, something amazing usually happens in my life, often in unexpected ways. It's like a universal law, and it's this powerful transformation that motivates me to stick to my daily practice. Personally, I start my day by asking, what's the best version of myself? I don't finish meditating until I truly feel like that person. The time it takes varies, as it's a journey happening in the present moment. Some days, I get there quickly, while other days might take longer. It's not about the time, it's about being fully present and experiencing a significant shift in my state of being. On days when my mind is filled with thoughts about future plans and past reflections, it can take me 45 minutes to an hour to bring my scattered thoughts and restless body back to the present. But my friends, this is the real work. I've learned that if I consistently bring my mind back to the present, instead of thinking too much about the future or the past, it's really beneficial. Those times when I focus and bring my attention back from distractions are the most rewarding. So, I set aside two hours in the morning, not because it always takes that long, but it gives me a good amount of time to relax and let go of the constant feeling of being rushed. It's my way of making sure I have enough time to connect with my true self. Now let's talk about the third rule, being intentional. People often struggle with understanding what intention really means. Let me make it simpler for you. Intention is about being really clear about what you want. Sounds easy, right? But here's the tricky part. When stress kicks in, we start making a long list of conditions and requirements in our minds. We think, I want this, but only if that happens, and I can't afford to impact this person or lose that thing. 
This isn't intention. It's trying to control every part of life. Real intention is more straightforward. It's about saying, I want this specific thing without being too attached to keeping everything else exactly as it is. When you ask open-ended questions like, what would it be like to have this? Or, what if I were in this situation? You engage your creative brain. This part of your brain looks at all your knowledge and experiences, putting them together into a new vision. Intention. can show up as a picture, a symbol, or a clear mental image. For instance, you might picture a peaceful retreat center. This image includes all the conditions and details you want. As this mental image forms, you start experiencing your dream in your mind. Surprisingly, your brain can't tell the difference between this vivid mental experience and real-life events. It's like rewiring yourself for the future. But it doesn't end there. Once you've set your intention, the real magic happens when you add emotion to it. Why? Because your body is like a subconscious mind, and it responds to the feelings that come from your thoughts. So, when you pair your intention with emotion, your body thinks you're living that future right now. Your cells adapt and get ready for the event you're picturing. It's like changing your body's story, moving from a record of the past to a map of the future. This powerful mix of intention and emotion sets the stage for big changes, both inside yourself and in your external reality. As we go through this amazing journey of self-discovery and growth, remember that we have the natural ability to shape our lives, destinies, and who we are. We can rewrite our stories, reprogram our minds, and live in line with our biggest dreams. So, enjoy the beauty of this process, appreciating the change that happens when we become the creators of our own destiny. The power to change is in each of us, waiting to be awakened. And as we keep waking up, we inspire others to do the same, making positive changes in our world. If the insights shared in this video resonated with you and sparked a flame of inspiration, consider subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you become a part of a community committed to growth and positive change. Share this video with your loved ones, allowing the ripples of transformation to extend beyond the bounds of this screen. Let's create a collective wave of empowerment and awakening. Thank you for watching.